All right, this is one of my favorite things. You know what, I love this whole wildlife conference. We're having so much fun. Well, there is a very special sponsor. The Platypod is behind so many of the great shots that I've seen in different class sessions today, and we'll see again tomorrow. The Platypod just gets you places you can't otherwise be. When I was learning photography, one of the very first pieces of, of equipment that I was told really matters a lot right after the camera is a tripod. That's because there was no such thing as a platypod. And I would say that the platypod being a tripod alternative is tied, it's neck and neck, with one of the most important pieces of equipment you can get right after you get your camera because it is so versatile, it helps you in so many ways. And you're gonna learn ways today from the inventor of the platypod himself, Larry Tiefenbrun, you're gonna learn about ways that wildlife photographers use the platypod and carry it around with them and overcome challenges that are caused by traditional tripods and solved by platypods. Dr. T, Larry T, so nice to be with you. And it's also great to be back, Larry, and great to be, and I appreciate you joining me for this presentation. And please, don't touch your channel, don't change the channel, don't run away. We've got a great show uh, for you today. Lots of interesting photos, lots of interesting setups, and it's all about wildlife this time. Very different from our past setups. You're gonna find some of the things we talked about in the past, we're really not gonna talk a whole lot about this time because a lot of you have seen our presentations before. And if you haven't, then go to our YouTube channel because you'll be able to find those easily. Uh, on the Platypod YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and uh, search for Platypod and you'll find some of the other presentations. But again, today we're here to talk about wildlife. Well, the pandemic is hopefully coming to an end pretty soon. We should be getting out more and we should be traveling more soon. So that people who want to join safaris and other adventures will be able to. If you, if you haven't been immunized already, please. If you can obtain a vaccine, try to go ahead and get immunized. We want herd immunity out there. Speaking of wildlife and herds, we want herd immunity and we wanna be able to get back to a normal life. Well, if you can't travel too far, wildlife starts in your own house and in your own backyard. And we're, we're gonna show you some images which you can easily shoot right at home and practice with your equipment before you do go on that safari or trip uh, out into the jungle. Larry, as you well know, and as the audience probably knows very well too, platypods excel in portability. There is nothing more compact than this for you to slip into your camera bag, either platypod ultra or the platypod max. And these are also very easily transportable right on a carabiner. You can hang it off your belt. And Larry, I know you, you like using it uh, like that as well, correct? I do, and I also, and, and I talk about this every time, I have a little ball head attached to either platypod, and a lot of times I'm shooting with the Ultra because I have about a medium-sized DSLR, and I have my uh, Benro ball head on here, and then that's attached to the camera. I never even take it off. I, you know, obviously if I pack it up, but if I'm just walking around on a trail, nature trail or something like that, I'll leave my camera attached to the platypod, attached to the ball head, so that I can set it down and take pictures at a moment's notice. And uh, it's just so much more convenient than a tripod, but every bit as stable. Well, and Larry, that's so important because the whole point of this little piece of equipment is that you're gonna have it with you when you least thought that you needed a tripod. And when you have uh, an image that needs incredible sharpness, or you're out in the evening and if you wanna get flowing water or stuff like that, you're gonna have a tripod available if you forgot to bring your tripod, or if you go to places like zoos where the tripod police won't allow you to set up a uh, tripod in most cases. Uh, you know, image sharpness, let's just talk about that for a second. and. and Please, I promise you, don't run away. We're gonna get into the slides within, within the next two or three minutes. But try just once going out and taking your images, your photos, either on a tripod or on a platypod. Compare them to shots that are handheld. And I promise you, as well as you think you know you can handhold an image, 
you're going to find that it's sharper, tech sharper on a platypod or on a tripod. Platypods allow you to achieve the lowest angles possible. We're going to show you in our images how low angle shooting in wildlife makes your subjects look much bolder, much more important. Also, you bring in foreground elements that you would otherwise miss shooting from eye level. They're super easy to set up, and they're also great for strapping onto objects if you want to get some remote images. I'm going to show you some uh, shots that were done uh, in that fashion. It works with all your existing equipment. Platypod has a standard 3 8 inch uh, titanium bolt embedded within the aluminum plate that will allow you to put any standard tripod head or gimbal, and we're going to show you that a little bit later too, uh, on, you know, onto this and use this as a sturdy mount for your equipment. They're very adaptable, rocks, wood, trees, almost anywhere that you go, just put it onto the ground or on, onto the snow and you can get a stable image. Let's go right into the uh, slideshow. Larry, are there questions coming in? Yeah, and in fact, that was exactly what I was gonna say. I wanna encourage, and, I, and I've said this leading up to uh, our time here, that we're gonna open up to a lot of Q&A. So make sure you guys put in questions in the Q&A. We've got staff watching that, and then we're gonna answer your questions toward the end of this presentation. So when we get near the end, we've got quite a bit of time for Larry T to answer your specific platypod questions, whatever they might be. And maybe they're about an accessory, or should I use the Max or the Ultra? Uh, or maybe you've heard about the new ball head that's coming out, the platyball. So whatever your questions might be related to platypod, platyball, uh, and any and all of the accessories, if something comes up during this presentation, don't hesitate. Go right ahead and ask, and we're going to try and get to all those questions as we wrap up our presentation this evening. Dr. T, let's show them some of these awesome images from fantastic photographers. And I want everybody to pay special attention. As you see these images, you're gonna see gorgeous, breathtaking wildlife photography, but don't miss that there's also gonna be an inset of a little picture off to the side that shows you how the image was captured. So Dr. T, take it away. Okay, and uh, we're gonna do things a little bit different. I'm gonna run through the equipment much quicker this time than we usually do in our presentations because I want to allow for your questions. So you've. By now, you've all heard about <clears throat> the Platypod ecosystem, and it's a group of uh, pieces of equipment that work in harmony together to really help you get steady images wherever you go. And I will refer you over to our website at platypod.com to get more information on this. I will also encourage you, as soon as you get to the website, sign up for our email list. Once a month, just once a month, we send out a gorgeous newsletter that illustrates three major points of how you can improve your photography and improve it using platypods. And I think you'll find these really superb. In fact, the newsletter is going to be coming out in a few days. So if you are on our mailing list, you will you'll see that newsletter. Dr. T, can I just point out that platypod does not abuse the email list? I'm on so many email lists and I sign up for a little nugget of a newsletter or, or some tips and tricks thing, and I just get bombarded day after day after day. With Platypod, once a month, I get Absolutely. information. It's great information, and it only comes once a month. So you're not gonna be inundated and overwhelmed by signing up. So sign up, you get good content. And by, I, I'm, I'm proud to say that by the end of this evening, I think we will break uh, a number of 10, over 10,000 subscribers uh, to our newsletter. I'm very proud of that. Great. So you can see what big heavy equipment you can put on a platypod with any tripod head. And we'll talk about our own tripod head briefly at the end of the presentation. And I will refer you again to the, to the website to look over the salient features of our two platypods, the Max and the Ultra. Let's get right into the uh, images. Shiv Verma, New England photographer, does a lot of um, uh, photo tours, safaris, and, uh, and is a wonderful teacher, but he's also been an advisor to Platypod as in, as, uh, in, in product development uh, along the way, especially with our Platyball project. Well, 
She was on assignment in Africa and went on safari. He straps a platypod ultra onto each armrest and he had the whole bench to himself. So he, he put one on either side of the truck that was taking him around so that he could be ready at any moment to shoot and get his images with good support, generally with the with the uh, vehicle parked and a heavy telephoto lens on it, but the kind of images that Shiv is obtaining. That's fantastic. You know, I think this, this, this image speaks for itself and it tells a story. And this is what your photography is about. It's about telling stories. You don't need a caption here. This just says it all. This image I would like to talk about for a minute because I think it's it's an amazing composition. Uh, this is a wildebeest migration that Shiv uh, shot this photo of, again, with the same setup that you just saw before. You have foreground, medium ground, background. The foreground in those heavy turbulent waters, turbulence that was created, obviously, by the wildebeest themselves. Then you have this dark line of wildebeest going diagonally through the image, leading your eye around, and then just this mass of mammals in the background that's barely even individually recognizable. It's a texture back there as a background. And I, I, I was just so amazed by this, uh, by this image, the, the, the emotion and the, the action going on here in a still photo. Scott Bourne, and I hope you listen to his uh, presentation today, and he'll have, a, I believe, another one tomorrow. Uh, like, wants to be known as the bird man. I don't think anybody in photography knows more about birds than uh, Scott does. He's an amazing wildlife photographer. He has uh, authored uh, several articles, books, has set up several podcasts, including photofocus.com uh, as a, uh, as a uh, teaching site. Scott got an unbelievable image close up with, uh, with some eagles. And I want to read you his descriptions. We don't have the, uh, the behind the scenes uh, image, but listen to this. Scott says, I wanted to try an unusual perspective. I first tried a telephoto lens because, well, that's easy. I wanted to use an ultra wide lens a perspective hardly anyone ever sees of an eagle because it requires you to get within a few inches of the bird. When I spotted the eagles leaving, I went back with my Olympus camera and super wide zoom lens. I mounted it to a platypod ultra and tied it to a tree limb. I then went about 25 feet away and hid in some brush, waiting for the eagles to come back. They did and then I remotely fired the camera. You're walking right into the eagle's living room here. Wow. And you're engaging with the subject. Again, foreground, medium ground, background, and you very rarely will see will see an image like this. Yeah, I just now, can't the way imagine that Scott I can't, did this. I can't imagine getting that close and how he did it helps us an awful lot. He did it with the remote trigger. Well, let's talk about let's talk about this image for a second because I think I'd like you to understand what it means to strap a platypod onto an object like a tree. Okay, I have this pole set up with a platypod on it. Let me show you how I did this setup. The platypod ultra comes with a 20-inch strap, <clears throat> and also our accessory kit comes with a 36-inch strap so this will get you around about a four to five inch object this will go around to a nine to ten inch uh, object and right now we're running a super special while supplies last where you can get our strap which is included in the platypod multi accessory kit you get this for free with the purchase of any platypod so you take the cinch strap and if you remember one thing that I that I'm telling you today, it's that you put the black Velcro on the outside, wrap it around your object, 
go through both metal rings, come back, just tack down the Velcro a little bit, come back around, and then you can see how on the Ultra, the arms of this are open to allow you to attach a belt. Slip it through here, slip it through again. Now, if you're using a Platypod Max, you'll have to thread it through the, the closed loops first before you strap it to the tree. But this is so easy. Now, I just tighten the Velcro a bit more. And then there's one more thing I like to do. Take one of the four spikes that come with the Platypod Ultra and just place it through at the top and tighten it like I've done with this upper one. Let's take this down so you can see a little bit better, like I've done with this upper one. And you tighten it in. That gives counter tension in the other direction so that this strap will be on super tight and the, the Ultra will be a nice stable setup and it won't slip in up or down on the tree. The I, next thing you do I, is I, you take your ball head, and you know I'm going through this very carefully, but you could do this entire thing in about 45 seconds. You wind your ball head onto here. Now, since our bolt is embedded in the plate, cannot be removed with up to two, 100 pounds of pressure, it just straps on. You don't have to lock anything in from the back, okay? Now you take, now this thing is very nice. This Venro ball head allows you to ratchet the lever and just tighten that nice and tight. You then take your camera, and I recommend if you're gonna do any serious photography, buy yourself an ARCA compatible L bracket. That's, if you can see this piece over here, okay, comes around, which allows you to take both portrait and landscape and portrait images just with flipping the camera around like that. Let's just show you in landscape mode, we just tighten this on here using the ARCA compatible clamp. Now I'm going to turn this around so you can see it from the other side. Okay, and there is your setup. Now you either use the remote system that comes with your camera, which can be a Wi-Fi or a Bluetooth system, or you can put on a remote trigger onto here. Pocket Wizard has triggers and there's connections that you can use for Nikon or Canon and you can remotely fire this setup. And again, if you want to go in if you want to go in portrait mode, you just take this out and you can go vertically onto here. Let's put that back down. And if there are questions on this, please put it into the Q&A. Larry will get your message and we'll try to address that a little bit later on. Larry, any comments before I, we move I just back? want to point out how sturdy and trustworthy it is. We're putting our really expensive cameras just like hanging out from a tree. And I've done this time and time and time again. And Dr. T was talking about, you know, with the bigger strap, I've, I've put it through the Platypod Max through these slots and then put that around a big tree, tree trunk or a telephone pole or something like that. And then the uh, the other possibility is then to use the ultra and then slide it on like Dr. T was showing. But how sturdy it is, how confident I am when I strap this on and then you use the spike for the counter pressure and it actually makes you feel very secure about putting your camera onto a precarious place and still getting a really steady shot. Larry, would you agree that, that it's as sturdy as the tree? <laughs> I don't know. I could probably run into the tree with my, my car and, and uh, not knock over the tree, and I could run into that thing and knock it over, but it's pretty darn close to as sturdy as the tree. Just to quickly illustrate, on the Max, if you want to do the same kind of thing, you just go right through the belt loops over here, and then after that, strap this around onto the tree, and you can do the same thing with the spikes. The spikes on the Max are right on board over here. So, if, again, if there's questions on this, please put it in the Q&A, and we can go into more detail a little bit later. I would like to move on with our uh, presentation. All righty, here we go. Bob Davis. Well, Bob Davis, if you were at the Flash conference, you saw some images we showed. Bob's a wedding photographer, not a wildlife photographer. But as you know, there haven't been that many weddings lately. So, Bob decided he wanted to dabble in wildlife photography. And I'm showing you this image for one main reason. Go to almost any park with a pond or a lake in it, 
and you'll be able to find ducks or geese or, or swans in it. We'll show you a swan photo later. This is stuff that everybody can do. You don't have to be Moose Peterson to get an image like this, uh, although it doesn't hurt if you are. <laughs> and you can see uh, that Bob actually did this stepping back because he wanted to get in a little bit um, to, to, to get in a little bit closer with some of these uh, birds. And he was able to shoot this remotely with a pocket wizard mounted onto his onto his camera. Samantha Kennedy generally likes to shoot uh, images of uh, of lighthouses in Long Island, uh, mostly at dusk or nighttime. But she dabbled also a little bit in some wildlife. Now I know in my house in New Jersey, uh, well, two or three times a year we'll see a red fox in the backyard. Well, Samantha was ready. She had her platypod mounted onto a gimbal, and the gimbal allows you to get smooth movement to track an animal back, forth, up, down, without getting camera shake involved. And you'll be able to get a much sharper image using a gimbal. For those of you who intend to do serious wildlife photography, I would have you look into a gimbal. If you're just going to go on a safari and want to take a gimbal with you for one-time use, you can rent these at uh, either uh, borrowlenses.com or LensPro to go or other uh, other photography stores. But look what Samantha was able to do. Wow. Now you have to have patience to do this. This is probably I don't know if other if other instructors today have mentioned this, but probably the number one piece of equipment you need for successful wildlife photography is patience. You cannot tell an animal how to pose. You've got to sit there and wait for the moment. And Samantha did that. The fox engaged with the camera. And that's what makes this photo so effective. The other thing that makes it effective is the low angle. If you're shooting it, standing up, looking down on the animal, the animal will be diminutive. By going from a low angle, the, the beast here looks much bolder. Dr. T, can I ask you to to go back one slide so we can look at the insert. And I want to point out that not only is there a gimbal mounted on the platypod, but the platypod has those spiked feet. And in all four points on there, three or four points, and those spiked feet are what really keeps that, you know, it's, it's a very unsteady surface, you know, the snow there and, and whatever brush is underneath that, but you get a really solid feel out of it because the spiked feet are hitting hard uh, and also stabilizing and keeping it from sliding around. Absolutely, Larry. And, and uh, you'll find that, again, for a purpose like this, you don't want that platypod sliding around on the ice. And you're exactly right. The spikes accomplish that. We'll show you another way to use the spikes whose opposite end have rubber feet on them uh, in the next image. And then I'm going to show you exactly what you do with a gimbal. We have one here. And uh, in, in just another moment, I want to show you another image first from Bob Coates, who's a platypod ambassador, fine art photographer. He writes a lot of art articles for photofocus.com. And uh, we have no uh, personal obligation to photofocus. But I will tell you, I get an email from them with two or three articles every day on photography. And I've learned uh, so much from their, uh, from their website. And by the way, I want to mention uh, just for one second, I've also learned a tremendous amount from the Kelby One organization. I've been uh, on the other side as a member uh, for about 20 years. I still have a five digit membership uh, number. I think, Larry, you have one that's about two digits. Yeah, uh, yeah. As you've been uh, following with Scott Kelby for all these years. And I wanna thank the Kelby organization for teaching me so much about photography. I've been shooting uh, images for over 45 years as well. All right. Back to Bob Coates. So Bob had his platypod set up by a lake. And what he did was he had, he used the opposite side of the spikes, the rubber feet. I'm gonna demonstrate that in a moment live. And he got this amazing picture of an egret. That's beautiful. And I have to talk about this, this, this image, uh, just, just uh, the, uh, the composition here. This really has, and I'm sure the other, Instructors have been talking about Jay Mizell's triad of light, color, and gesture. And this image has it all. 
the beautiful light that's highlighting the bird, the eye always goes to the sharpest part of the image, to the brightest part of the image, and if nothing else, the reddest part of the image, which is not really in here. But you can see that this low key background, foreground and then background, just allow that egret to come forward. Also, you have in the foreground, the reflection, you have this beautiful S-curve that's going from the feet of the egret all the way up to the neck and the beak. You have a little bit of movement in the egret's left wing, which is towards the rear, tiny bit of movement there. Uh, Bob told me this was shot at uh, one eight, 850th of a second. Now, if you want to get totally frozen action, I recommend go to 3200th of a second. But with the platypod, you were able to get a really sharp image. The background is held beautifully. And just this, this diagonal composition from dark to light going through, I think, I think there's worlds to learn about this image. Larry, any comment there? Um, I, I just love the image. I mean, I'm very familiar with egrets in Central Florida, but, but you're exactly right on the composition. I like how we're looking at the light, looking at the angles, everything looks beautiful. I also want to point out that we are starting to get some questions coming in. Keep the questions coming in because we're going to answer those toward the end. Back to you, Dr. T. All right, let's talk about gimbals for a second. My friend Ray Nason, who is the Northeastern uh, representative for Benro, was kind enough to lend us his gimbal for this uh, conference. Now, this is a beautiful $400 gimbal. You don't have to spend $400. They are available for less. This is more expensive because the arm on here, this very strong arm, is made out of carbon fiber, which uh, makes it a little bit more expensive. Uh, it's the Benro GH5C. I know uh, B&H sells it. They are a little bit lim limited in quantity lately, but it's a fine gimbal. If not this one, there's others uh, for you to either purchase or rent if you're going to do a lot of wildlife photography. This gimbal also comes with an Arca plate, and later on in the talk, we'll talk a little bit more about Arca plates, similar to the other uh, ball head that I showed you before. This one is pretty long, which allows you to balance your camera nicely. Here, it's an easy thing. I'm just balancing on the center mark on the side here because... This lens is perfectly center balanced because we're using the collar ring. Now, if you have not become familiar with collar rings, long telephoto lenses have a mount right over here. And maybe I should take this off a second. Okay, and this little mount can, can even come off. All right, and goes right onto here, which allows you to mount your camera onto a tripod. Now I've put an Arca plate onto this mount and there are markings over here for you to center it. I've got it locked right in there. But now, what does this gimbal allow you to do? Well, if I'm shooting images of birds, now I can use this almost like a gun turret to go all the way around, track, but yet there is rock stable stability in here that you can't really do easily with hand holding. I also recommend whenever you're shooting images of moving animals, put your camera into high speed continuous mode and take a bunch of shots, three to five images. You will find one of those images will be superior and you'll get a much sharper shot. But to show you how well balanced this is, okay, I'm just rolling it around with one finger and it just balances itself beautifully. So that's your, if you're not already familiar with gimbals, that's your introduction to it. And again, um, if it's not something you would use often, they can be rented for an occasional use. But I'm also going to show you something that we can do with our future ball head, the platyball, that will mimic the action of a gimbal for occasional use, and we'll talk about that a little later. Uh, Larry, are we okay to go ahead? Yeah, we can go ahead. Onward, now. Uh, Mike Corrado is a Nikon Photo Services Manager. Mike, uh, oh gosh, I've been reading some of his articles in Nikon World for years now, and uh, really leading photographer 
uh, in America, very multi-talented fellow. But here Mike is doing some wildlife photography. He's got his platypod now. Uh, I don't think I see this spiked in. I think Mike just dug his platypod in to the snow and realized that everything in platypod is waterproof, water resist, I'm sorry, it's rust proof. So that if you get it wet, that's okay. Uh, you just take it home and wash it off with soap and water and, uh, and it'll be fine. So he's got this dug into the sand to take images wow. of these starlings with a remote. And I just think, again, this is a beautiful and exciting uh, picture. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love the dark background also to get in the contrast with the white in the front. You got diagonals. Again, lots to talk about with, compo with composition here. Rhonda Co has a pet spider that she likes taking images of and posts them on Instagram. She's got her platypod set up on a tabletop and so she can get real close with a macro lens. And we have a setup that also helps you with lighting for macro photography, which we'll talk about in a minute, in a few minutes, okay? And actually just in a minute, because Skip Cohen, who is uh, the uh, Platypod CMO, uh, has our marketing. And Skip was also at one point president of Rangefinder Magazine, the American CEO for Hasselblad, uh, very experienced and well-known in the photography world. Well, Skip was in his house going towards his back porch, and I don't know if you can see this, but beyond his camera, there's like a little tiny black speck right at the bottom of the screen of his back patio. And when he, he was almost gonna dust it off as a piece of dust, this thing was about, uh, about an eighth to a quarter of an inch long, and he saw it was a frog. That's incredible. So he grabbed his Platypod Max Macro Bundle, which I'll show you in, in a minute, and got a nice image of this frog. And I think it's really cool how he set it up on this grid. This grid is actually the screen of his screen wow. door back porch. So there's like less than a millimeter in between these uh, in between these fibers of the screen that the frog is climbing up over here. That's incredible. You know, you, you just so the little spot that's right in front of the lens on the far right image is the frog. That is the frog right on the white over there at the at the, at the base of the uh, at the bottom of the screen. All right, and uh, I just want to show you for a second what's in that Max Macro bundle. Uh, hold on one second here, and there we go. Okay, so Max Macro bundle comes with a Platypod Max, the full the full kit which includes uh, the four spikes. And it also includes two sets of the Platypod goosenecks and two of these Lytra lights. Now I have one of the Lytra lights set up with the bulb diffuser that comes with it and another light set up without. So if I were shooting, let's, here, we'll show you a setup real quickly here. You just take your ball head in this case, the IN00 from Menro, which is also available on our website. Inexpensive, but super duper strong. And then you just take your camera. Now I have a 90 millimeter Tamron macro lens on here. Just mount it on here. Then put your subject in front of it. And you use one light as the key light. You use the second light for fill, let's get this over here, there we go. Okay, and second light for fill, and then you can get in real close to your subject, beautifully lit <coughs> and nice and steady, which is so important for macro because your depth of field in macro is going to be very, very tight. The other thing that a lot of people are doing now is something called focus stacking, where they're taking a whole series of images close up to expand that depth of field tremendously. These lights are super bright, and just to give you an idea, here's my here's my hand lit up on low power, medium power, high power, and you will get an enormous amount of light 
out of these Lytra lights. So that Max Macro bundle is available on the Platypod website, and it's already an incredible price in, because it's including the lights and the goosenecks and everything. Dr. T, would you, would you say what the elements are of the Max Macro bundle? Because you added some other things, and I want to make sure we, we clarify what's part of the Max Macro bundle. Okay, so, so very simply, you will get the Platypod Max. You get two of our gooseneck sets, and each one contains two goosenecks in it, which are, um, which are uh, expandable. They're stackable. Oh, okay. So, so a total of four longer to get a total of four goosenecks and you get two complete Lytra uh, torch lights, very bright, 16 LEDs in each light, which comes with its own charging cord. You can you, you use your own um, uh, UP, uh, UPS uh, adapter, uh, but it has its own cord in there and it has a bulb diffuser in there. These are also these lights are also waterproof down to uh, 20 meters. And they are, um, well, we said they're, re they're rechargeable. Yeah, and they're very bright and very smooth, even light. It, there's no hot spots, and, and it's just the smoothest fall off, just a very trustworthy light. And I love the, the, the control that you have in a macro setup or a product shot setup or something like that, where you move the lights exactly where you want them and they stay because of the uh, the goosenecks. It's a great setup. Right. And they're adaptable. We don't have the uh, adapters on our website, but you can also get barn doors uh, for these. Here's a here's actually a set of barn doors with another diffuser on it. So they have barn doors. They have uh, little soft boxes that can be attached to them. Filters. They're very very versatile uh, little lights, and that's why we teamed up with uh, with Lytra to uh, provide you with uh, these lights. Ready to roll on? Please do. And while Dr. T is getting to the next slide, I want to point out a reminder, make sure you submit your questions. We've got some good questions rolling in. I can't wait for the Q&A portion, but make sure you submit your questions in the Q&A right now, because we're going to answer those when we get toward the end of this presentation. It's coming up quicker than you think. Okay, here we go. Deb Sandage, another Nikon ambassador. Uh, Deb was out at a uh, man-made pond with these beautiful swans. Now, if you look at the inset, Deb's got her platypod, and I highly recommend that if you're gonna be on a uh, rock surface like that, in our multi-accessory kit, which again, you can get right now for free, together with the platypod max, uh, what you should do is take the rubber pad, put it just under your platypod max. This way on a stone surface, like you saw in that image, it won't slip and slide around and it won't jiggle. So that pad you'll find very useful for that purpose. And also if you want to mount your platypod onto your car hood or roof, it's also really good to prevent slippage and to prevent scratching uh, on the roof. Next image from Jason Hahn. Now, Jason and my friend Levi Sim and I all went together. Uh, this was a day when I was down in Tampa uh, shooting a, a, uh, a session of The Grid together with Scott Kelby. And we went uh, to get some images of birds before the show. So Jason set his camera down on the beach, and I'm gonna show you that image in a minute taking a picture of this beautiful little Dunlin. Now this bird is about three inches tall. You shoot downward on it, it's gonna look tiny. Here it is absolutely majestic. And you can see Jason's setup. He had a Tamron 150 millimeter to 600 millimeter zoom lens. This is a big, big lens. Uh, set down on a uh, heavy duty ball head and on the Platypod Max right on the sand, but was able to get such a beautiful, sharp image. And when he's done, he takes a horsehair brush, brushes off the sand, throws it in his car. When you get home, you take it apart and just wash it off with soap and water, and you're good for the next round. You've all heard of Moose Peterson, right? Okay, <laughs> I don't think he needs any introduction at this conference, right, Larry? No question. 
Okay. Moose, I think this was close to where he lived, uh, took, I believe this is a 500 millimeter lens, just to show you how heavy duty our, our equipment is. And guys, you can do this in your own backyard as a chipmunk. But set up the composition correctly. You've got a diagonal, almost horizontal line leading up to the chipmunk. You've got the beautiful green background all nicely blurred out and the wood uh, tree behind it as a, a contrast to that. Just really nice composition here of a simple creature that you can all find something like this. Now, this little bird is an American oyster catcher, also shot on a platypod, low angle. You pick up the reflection from the water and very peaceful, graceful image. Rick Salmon, also some of you have heard of. Rick took his platypod on safari and at this watering hole we've got some really nice images of an elephant. This was done with an iPhone on an automated panning holder. I've actually never held a unit like this, but uh, he adapted it to the platypod with a a small cross nut that comes with Platypod Max. And I'd like to show you a, a slightly different way to mount a, uh, a, a smartphone onto your Platypod. And this is what comes in our uh, kit called the Ultra Essentials Kit. Now the Ultra Essentials Kit, I know Larry, you're gonna ask me what's in it, right? <laughs> the Platypod Ultra complete set with spikes, with, uh, with the strap and everything. It also comes with a Benro ball head complete with an Arca compatible disc, uh, I'm sorry, plate. And we'll talk about Arca plates a little bit more uh, as we get closer to the Q&A se uh, section because I'm sure people are going to have questions about, uh, about that. Uh, so it comes with that. It comes with the Ultra as we mentioned. It comes with the entire uh, multi-accessory kit and it comes with one more device which we've not talked about. Uh, yet today, and that is this little piece of equipment called a square jellyfish. And let me go to another camera just to show you how handy this little thing is. Now I've got a square jellyfish set up on the Arca plate that was in with, together with the ball head. And what you do is you just take this ball head, mount it onto the Platypod Ultra. You see how easy it is to put it on there. And then you just put your smartphone on here and you can shoot and it just was with a spring mount. It just mounts right on here and you can shoot either in uh, landscape or, or portrait, uh, portrait mode or in landscape just by turning a little knob back here. Larry, do you have a, a question about the Ultra Essentials kit? No, I actually was just going to make a comment. You're showing people right now what's set up on my office desk at home. Because oh, I, 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 I have my phone set up on my, my platypod with the uh, Benro ball head and the square jellyfish phone holder and the uh, Arca Swiss plate. And uh, that's, what, that's what actually holds my phone on my desk while I'm working. You're you're so right, Larry. This is something I use every single day. People will be using every single day because it's great for FaceTiming. In my case, with my grandkids, uh, it's great for uh, it's great for reading your email while you're trying to eat breakfast and you've got something to hold your phone, so you don't have to sit there one-handed. Uh, so it's a great, useful tool for photography. Again, you can strap this onto onto items, especially if you want to do some time-lapse uh, photography, uh, and but you're gonna use it every single day. All righty, back to the slideshow. Please do, we're getting a little tight on time. I wanna make sure okay. we answer questions. Okay, so I'm gonna move ahead over here. Zach Herr is a uh, lizard photographer. If you look on Instagram, you'll find him at I am making art, all in one word. And Zach is an expert on uh, poisonous lizards. Uh, do not try this at home if, you don't, if you're not experienced with it. But he shows how platypods are used a little bit differently. You can use them to hold up branches, of course, the lights that we talked about, and different pieces of equipment. Now, the way that Zach uh, did this is simply by taking a platypod, 
putting on a spigot adapter that comes together with our uh, multi-accessory kit. And then this little device, which if you don't have one, gosh, this comes in so handy. It's called a magic clamp. It's made by Manfrotto. There are other manufacturers that have copied it, but Manfrotto still has the best. And little safety clamp on there. You put it on here, and then you can wind this around any branch or stick or pole. This is really great for mounting things onto poles, but you can see how this will go right onto, onto a platypod. There's another little trick that I like to do if I want to hold really small, fine objects, and that is I take one of our goosenecks and I'll put on, I like to do this, there's different ways to mount the goosenecks, but I like to use the little riser and quarter inch adapter that comes with our multi-accessory kit, and I'll just put the gooseneck onto here, and then what I've done is a little DIY fix, and I know, Larry, you love these kind of cheap shot tricks. Oh, yeah. And I drilled a little hole, I don't know if you can see that little hole, yeah. into one side of a simple wood clothespin, quarter inch hole, and threaded it onto here, and now I've got a holder for small objects, just like Zach used it in his image. And well, he, here he used the magic clamp. But again, for smaller items, I think this is more appropriate. And sometimes you can't avoid your subjects engaging with the equipment as they <laughs> I thought that was a little comical. Uh, last images here are from Hilmar Smith. Hilmar is a portrait photographer. She's also she also runs social networking uh, for uh, for Platypod. And if you're on the chat line, everybody say hi, Hilmar, because I'm sure she's out there. As well as Shiv Verma, uh, I think is also there trying to answer some questions uh, on the chat line. And thank you, Shiv and Hilmar, for being there. And Hilmar was sent on a mission to get some wildlife photography, and she's not usually a wildlife photographer. So she went to the nearest place that she knew had some nice wildlife, and that was Animal Kingdom, because she lives in Orlando, right near Disney World. And she got this beautiful light dappled image. And you might have to turn up the brightness a little bit to see the beautiful patterns on this lovely animal. It's also known as a forest giraffe. This is an okapi. That's so cool. You can and, see the setup. And, and you yeah. get caught up in looking at the wildlife, but off to the right, make sure you notice. What she's done is she's got the platypod with the spiked feet on something that you find at a lot of these places, zoos and trails and things like that, is the wooden handrails or the wooden walk paths. So this is fantastic for that. And then she's got the uh, ball head on top of that. And then she has, and you can see in this case, it's an orange L bracket on her camera. So it's the ARCA compatible mounting plate in the shape of an L. They make them for all kinds of different camera bodies. And so, um, so that's how she's got her camera mounted. All right, and she got one more image here. And this is a golden weaver, or as Hilmer said, nice little yellow bird. <laughs> <laughs> I think what's lovely here is just this, this low key dark image with just that little dapple of light on that bird highlighting the yellow orange and red colors uh, that you can see in here and just uh, again a beautiful composition it took hilmar a lot of patience to get these animals uh you know the way she wanted them and hilmar is somewhat of a control freak she likes to be able to tell her yeah. subjects do this pose like that hold it can't do that in wildlife you just simply have to have the main ingredient which is patience I'm gonna show you one more thing, and then I'm, we're gonna to get to the questions. Now, we've talked in our other conferences about the Platyball. I've gone through all the different features, and I'll refer you to some of those videos which you can look at uh, by going to the Platypod channel at YouTube. But today, I wanted to show you how, in a pinch, if you're out in the wild, and our new ball head is gonna be coming out, actually, this is a prototype model. This is actually what it's going to look like in Hilmar Smith red. And um, we've got this set up so that to show you how you can use this as a gimbal. Now, this is coming out in December if you haven't already backed it on Kickstarter. Kickstarter backers will be getting it sooner. But you can take 
this, mount it sideways, all right? And I'm gonna tighten this up over here with the arc of plate. And now loosening the panning head and loosening the platter ball with the little buttons there. Now, guess what I've got? That is so cool. All right. Now, I'm happy to take questions about anything, including the platter ball. Larry, let's, let's go right All into right, the let's roll into the questions. Dr. T, the first question uh, comes from Will, and Will is asking, so I'm interested in how to mount to a gimbal. And so I think you kind of showed that. The, the main thing is that the gimbal is mounted on the platypod. The gimbal could also be mounted on a tripod, I suppose. But then to mount the camera onto the gimbal, would you show where that is? Because that's, so, that's a, an Arca mount. So that, again, this mount comes with an Arca plate. Arca plates come in many shapes and sizes. Here's one that comes with our Benro, uh, our Benro uh, ball head. Also, here's one that's going to come with the Plata ball, which is round. And we can talk about that in, in a minute. But to answer your question quickly, you go right on here. You just take the quick release plate. It goes right into this stand on the gimbal. You tighten it into place and then loosen the knobs and you're ready to shoot. I, does that answer the question? Oh, and one other thing to know, using the collar mount, these usually have a knob on the side that allows you to just rotate the camera so you can go vertical. So you don't have to take the camera off to do that. And that comes on your camera, on your lens, your telephoto lens collar ring. These are not available on short lenses, only on the bigger telephoto lenses. Yeah. You know, I, I, think, I, think, I think most people already know this, but um, ARCA compatible is the quick release plate mount on many ball heads from many manufacturers. It's not universal, but it is the most common. And so then the Arca plates that you buy, I bought a whole bunch of Arca plates because I have, a, I have a handful of different ball heads and then they all use the Arca plates. So then I bought a whole bunch of Arca plates and those are mounted on all my cameras and then on the lens mount. And Dr. T is showing what makes an Arca plate actually work. It's, it's those these little things. angles over here. I'm sorry, that's a little blurry there. Let's try our other camera here. You can see, you oh, see yeah. that angle coming in there. And that's what that's what is the same between all the Arca plates. Even our round disc also has that little wedge in there. And that will allow you to mount it either onto our Plata ball or on any any tripod head. Any Oops. Arca compatible tripod head. Any, com any ARCA compatible. Now, I'll tell you, Manfrotto has their own style of rapid release heads that is not ARCA compatible. But you can see how you can mount any ARCA piece onto almost any other uh, ARCA piece. Uh, the Plata Ball has been tested with many different ARCA plates, and it's compatible with all of them. I haven't seen one that we couldn't, that we couldn't mount. Okay, next, next question, question comes from Diane Arnold, and she's asking, of course, we all want the latest update on the Platyball progress, and I think you mentioned a couple of things about the, the time frame of the Platyball release and uh, where people can find more information. Okay, I'm happy to talk about that for a second because I know I've gotten a lot of emails and questions. Originally, when we were on Kickstarter, Platyball was supposed to come out last December. What we found with our early prototypes, and this was one of them, was that there was too much variability in the amount of weight that this could hold. And with the way we determine is we would mount these sideways and then hang weight from it. We were ranging anywhere between eight and 16 pounds and we were promising this to be 22 pounds compatible. We tried different manipulations to see if we can get, could get it going and it just wasn't satisfactory. We then went and redesigned the entire guts. There's a, a major gear system, mechanical, not electronic, major gear system inside here. We redesigned the whole thing. It set us back about six or seven months. We are now on track. The molds are made for these. They've already made practically all the parts. In fact, by today, almost all the parts are done. And we're going to have the first testing samples. We're going to have about uh, 40 of the Platypod, uh, Platypod Elite and the other model. Let me grab that over here known as the Platypod, Platyball Ergo. 
that's over here. This one has an electronic leveler in the back. This one does not, but both have the same mechanics uh, in here. And these are ready to be produced. We're gonna have 40 of each of them by the end of April. We're gonna put them through rigorous testing with professional photographers such as Scott Kelby and others. And we're also gonna put them through a special testing robot which will push these buttons somewhere upward of 100,000 times wow. to make sure that there's no wear and tear when we take it apart and look at it. After that's done, we go into full production. People who backed us on Kickstarter and asked for early delivery, we're gonna be flying some of them over at, at, at great expense uh, for early delivery. Those will be ready for the end of August. And then the rest of Kickstarter and Indiegogo backers will get theirs in October because those will be coming in by C. Takes about two months longer for that to happen. And then we hope to have this in stores by December, ready for the holidays. Sounds great to That's me. The Dr. T, I, I do want to speed along because we do have a handful of additional questions and we're running out of time. So I want to. Can we ask, can we ask Jason for an extra five minutes or so? Oh, I'll inflict an extra five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I do want to get to these questions. But yeah, I, so, I, do want, I do want to do that. So Andre has asked the question. This is a fun one. Where does the name Platypod come from? And I, I know the answer. I can't wait to, to You can share. actually see it on our website if you look at, at the About section. So, uh, you know, as a physician, I have a little bit of, of background uh, with some Greek and Latin. And the word platy means flat. The word pod means foot. It's a flat foot. And when we came out, this is our very original Platypod. This is no longer available. I thought I would do a little something extra here, since platypod sounds a little bit like platypus, giving it the look of a duckbill. And so that's how the name platypod came about, but it describes it perfectly. It is a flat foot. Oh, that's great. Okay, now we do have, uh, I, I said we had a handful of additional questions, and all of a sudden, <laughs> five more just showed up. So I'm gonna okay. zip through these as quickly as I can. All right, so the next question is from Bob C. Are the Platypod web discounts available to us in the UK? Yes, they are. And we ship all over the world. So Good yes, answer. They are, and you can cho choose which type of shipping you would like. Uh, we don't include customs and tariffs for your country. So I assume that you know what those percentages are going to be. So those you would have to pay upon receipt. But okay. yes, we'll ship anywhere in the world. Okay, great. Uh, next up. And this is somebody asking about the L bracket. What was the name or the company brand for the L bracket you were showing? And uh, they said it was a little hard to understand. Noel was asking that. But I, I can say that there are all kinds of different brands. What you want to look for is go in and into, so go to like the B&H website, find your camera, and then start looking under accessories or even contact the people at B&H because they have some experts there that will walk you through this. And there are three or four or five different makers of L brackets uh, beyond the makers of the ball heads. That, and the uh, price that ranges are tremendous. I mean, this L yeah. bracket is made by B&H's um, sub company, um, Sunway Photo. Uh, this one probably runs about 70 or $80. If you get them from really right stuff, you may pay upwards of $150 for an L bracket. Yep. The one I have here, and honestly, I'll, I'll, I'll say this, this is the one I like the most, is made by Pro Media Gear. It's their universal L bracket. And what I love about it is that, believe it or not, their Allen wrench is magnetically held right in one side over here. These, I think you can only really get from Pro Media Gear, all one word, dot com. Uh, and I would refer you there. Uh, I've been very happy uh, with their uh, with their equipment. And they make this both in a three inch size and a four inch size. So if you have a um, a battery pack on here, one of those vertical uh, holding battery packs, you can fit this on here as well. I've also added a spider holster. Uh, uh, yeah, I saw that little nubbin on here so that I could mount this on my uh, spider holster. Okay, Chris. Hope that helps with uh, Chris Lafredo has asked a question, and I, I think you skimmed past this earlier, but I want to make sure that we answer it. Even if he asked before you answered, I want to make sure you re-answer, which okay. is um, the bottom of a platypod, will that scratch a delicate surface like a car? Okay. And then the solution. 
So generally it should not, as you can see, this is, is, is super smooth. I've actually been to the factory uh, in China that produces this. With, the owner's a wonderful fellow named Ricky, who I'm, you know, I'm, I'm very, very happy with. And I've seen them take these and polish these so they are nice and smooth. But you know what? If you happen to scratch it, I don't want to take responsibility for you know anything happening with your car. So I would recommend if you buy this, you're gonna get the you're gonna get the uh, accessory kit for free. Keep that rubber pad and just put it underneath. It also helps prevent slippage. But no, these are smooth. If you put them down on your table, you should not scratch anything. Yeah, and uh, I do want to point out, Dr. T said you get the uh, the pad for free with the accessory kit if you buy a platypod, but that's a, that's while supplies last, right? That's true. That's a limited time. I only anticipate uh, several more weeks where that's going to be available for several reasons, which you'll understand later. Thank okay. You. Uh, next question comes from Laura, and it is, can the goosenecks and Lytra torches work with the platypod Ultra that I already own? Yes, they will. Let me show you the simplest kind of setup. We've got plenty of screw holes on here. Some of these are so that you can mount them onto a tripod. We didn't even mention that. You can stow your platypod on a tripod. But if you simply take the gooseneck, and these goosenecks are male on one end, female on the other, but you can adapt the other end with a little cross nut that comes with it, and it stows right in a little hole on the side. Okay, and then let's put a Lytra torch right on top. Screw that on, and now you can position this any way you want, and yes, you can take your images with the Ultra. So that, yes, the answer to your question is absolutely yes, it does All righty, next question comes from Kathy. This is a good question. She says, I have a Nikon D7500 with a 70 to 300 millimeter lens. I will okay. probably buy a larger lens soon. Can you recommend a platypod for me to use when a tripod isn't practical? So for the larger lenses and telephoto lenses, uh, and especially super wide ultra lenses, we usually recommend the platypod max. But for your camera, your lens, your lens is really no heavier than this macro lens. Ultra will work just fine. The problem with the ultra wide lenses is they have a big bulbous front element. And if, you're, if your lens weighs over 900 grams, max is the way to go because what I want to avoid is forward tipping. It won't happen with this. It won't happen with your kit lens or your, I'm sorry, your uh, travel lens, but it, it can happen with, uh, with the wider lenses. Also, if you plan on shooting on soft ground or on sand, the Max gives you much better side-to-side -side support, so I would I would go with Max for that. All right, next up is a question from Noel asking, do they provide an instruction booklet or any other training mechanism when we purchase? And I would want to answer that one. The answer is yes, absolutely. There are a bunch of videos, and you don't have to pay, you don't have to buy anything extra. Just whenever you get a platypod, or even if you're thinking about getting a platypod, there are a bunch of explainer videos on the platypod website and on the platypod YouTube and someone channel. someone I know is starring in those videos. It's yeah, I, I met the guy that did some of those videos too. <laughs> Plus you're gonna find a lot of information on YouTube. There is no instruction booklet because truly, it's, it's a dumb piece of equipment. It just works. You just put your tripod ball head on here and it works. But as far as ideas of how to use it, that's what these conferences are for. And that's some information you'll find on YouTube. There are plenty of YouTube videos about platypods right now. Okay, so we're gonna try and do rapid fire. I have a, uh, this one comes from Clint. I have a platypod max, all accessories. I have a Manfrotto ball head, Arca plate. Want to strap the platypod with ball head to my belt or vest using straps but it just dangles. Do you have any tips? I'm not sure I can picture that in my head. You wanna, you wanna strap the platypod with a ball head to your belt or vest using straps. So I've seen uh, Levi Sim do this where he has a backpack on and he's got a cross link with the backpack and he's got the Ultra 
strapped onto it just like that. Ah. But I honestly, write to me at Larry at Platypod.com. If necessary, I'll even call you and we can try to go over your individual setup because, again, I, I would need to picture that better, too. Yeah, Clint, that's a, that's a good open offer. So, Larry T., would you say again where Clint should send his email? It's Larry at Platypod.com. It'll come straight to me. And again, I love speaking with our customers. And, uh, and sometimes we'll set up phone calls or even FaceTimes and try to work out your individual issue. Um, I actually take pleasure in that. So anytime. Okay. Uh, John Swartz is asking a question. Any chance of making a version of the Square Jellyfish phone holder that goes wider? My phone oh, does okay. not fit we as it's bigger than most. Just a disclaimer, we don't manufacture the, the square jellyfish. We, um, we partner with them. Uh, they supply them to, the, to us and we sell them. But square jellyfish, if you look up on B&H or on Amazon, they do make these for iPad minis, for mini tablets. Oh, wow. And they also make one for the iPad Pro. Just make sure to check that you're getting one that will take your size. Uh, because I think there are some of the biggest iPads that might not fit. But uh, look online, look up Square Jellyfish. Yes, they do, and I do own some of their wider ones. But these ones are made for smartphones, and these will fit even the largest smartphones, even with an OtterBox case on it. Uh, I've tested them out on, on many. What I love about these is how long-lasting they are. They really, they really are great. Very good. We're down to our final three. Wing is asking a question. What about a recommendation of a remotely controlled gimbal head that could rotate left, right, up, and down. Any suggestions? I don't have one on that. I can't. I'll refer you. I believe Ben Rose coming out with something. There is an I, there's an object known as SYRP. I think it's S Y R P. Um, they're kind of expensive. They run about seven hundred fifty dollars, uh, but they can be mounted right onto a platypod uh, so that you could strap them onto a tree or something else. But yes, if you look around at those two, I think you'll you'll find something that uh, that'll work for you. Second to last question, Ken is asking, what are the weight restrictions for each platypod? So I think I mentioned that before. It's really limited by uh, the lens and by the type of ground that you're going on. Uh, platypods, as far as when we give a weight rating of the ultra of 100 pounds or max of 300 pounds, that means that if you put on any ball head or even like this peg and hang 300 pounds from here, you will not rip out that bolt. Wow. So it's super strong. So that's what I, so our, the, the limitation weight wise is only limited by the ball head that you're using. Uh, and, and as far as ultra and max up to 600, up to 600 gram lenses can go on ultra and up to, and anything over that will go on max because the larger lenses all have, uh, have center uh, weighted um, collar rings, there it doesn't matter because you can spin it all the way around. It's balanced. All righty. And the final... 800 millimeter lenses on these things. Okay. The final question is from Nancy Wells. Nancy is asking, I have a Platypod Ultra and I mounted an iPhone 12 Pro Max on it. Do you have any suggestion on how to fire the iPhone remotely. I promise, Dr. T, this is not a planted question from me. Okay. Larry, would you like to answer the question? Well, well yes, I would. In fact, we were talking about this before we, uh, we went live. In fact, one of the things that I've had for a lot of years is a smartwatch, but only just this past year did I get an Apple Watch. I got an Apple Watch SE. And one of the capabilities of the Apple Watch SE is that it actually has a remote trigger that works with whatever phone it's connected to. So I can set up my iPhone wherever I want, across the room or, or down on the ground on a, a lakefront or something like that, and then bring up the remote and you actually get to see a preview on your Apple Watch of what the camera is seeing. You can switch it to the other camera, so the uh, away facing or the front facing camera, and then you can take a picture and it's on, I think by default it's on a three second timer, but you can remotely trigger your Apple iPhone from your Apple Watch. So hopefully that will help you. There you have it, you from the, from the king of DIY. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wanna thank all of you who sent in excellent questions. I really enjoyed uh, taking them and, and getting a chance to answer them. I wanna thank all of you 
who stayed around. I know it's been a long day, stayed around for our presentation today. Hope to catch you at the next uh, Kelby conference. Uh, whenever that will be, we'll be here too. And we hope to have an, some all new material for you at that time. But thank you all so much. And to all the photographers here who have supported us, such as Moose and Rick Salmon and Scott Bourne, uh, all of you, we really appreciate your help uh, with us today. Dr. T, inventor of the Platypod. In fact, the original Platypod, the Platypod Max, the Platypod Ultra, and now the Platyball that is coming in the very near future. So many cool things. And you can tell that, Dr. T, you and I have, have known each other for a lot of years. You can tell when somebody who has a passion for photography and also for invention comes together and uh, this has just been a lot of fun. It didn't stop with the original platypod. It just keeps growing. The ecosystem keeps growing, lots of things. And once again, please, right away, head over to the website, sign up for our newsletter. I want you to get, I've already seen it. I want you to get our next uh, newsletter and you'll get those once a month. And I promise you, you will learn something from each and every newsletter. That's a great way to end it. Thank you, Dr. T, inventor of the platypod. Gang, thank you so much for sticking around for this bonus session. Remember, you get to watch this again and again. And uh, we will see you tomorrow when we kick off day two of the Wildlife Photography Conference, exclusively from your friends at Kelby One. Have a great night, everybody.